Welcome to this semester's first edition of QUTV. I'm Melissa Wee. And I'm Hannah Youngquist. Although the snow is now melting, QUTV's Pete Leja takes a look back at the biggest event in, of the semester, the historic Midwest winter storm. It's been over two weeks since Quincy was hit by a record-setting snowstorm. According to the National Weather Service, 22 inches of snow was left in the storm's wake. And due to the inclement weather, many schools and businesses in Adams County closed, including Quincy University. The person who makes the ultimate decision um, in this particular situation was Dr. Teresa Reed, the Vice President for Academic Affairs. Her and I spoke early Tuesday morning. We probably spoke about 5.15, 5.30 to discuss whether or not we should close Tuesday. The 22 inches of snow broke the previous mark of 12.7 inches set on Christmas Day in 1915. Quincy University closed at 4 p.m. on Monday, January 31st and didn't open again until Friday, February 4th. And although most of the campus was closed for most of the week, allowing faculty and students to catch their breath, there's one group of the staff who worked to get the campus dug out of the blizzard of 2011. The fact that while we were all inside watching movies, drinking hot cocoa, relaxing on our snow days, the facilities guys were out there, you know, 14, 16 hour days. With the weather recently heating up, the remnants of the snow and ice from February will soon disappear. However, the blizzard of February 2011 will leave a lasting impression on those who were a part of it. From QTV News, I'm Pete Legia. The students had three days off to soak in the 22 inches of snowfall. QTV talked to a few of them about the record-setting blizzard and the mess it left behind. Well, I thought it was pretty cool to see all the snow falling, and I was really glad that we had three days for our snow days. I was amazed. I was, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that there was actually snow. I haven't seen snow since I was a little kid. The only bad thing was digging out my car which took an hour and 30 minutes, and I went up to my knees. Me and my friends made a lot of money shoveling the snow. It was just so lovely. The popular show, The Biggest Loser, has brought weight loss into the forefront of our society. QU has decided to get in on the phenomenon. This semester, Peers to Peers is hosting a weight loss competition where students, faculty, and staff have the opportunity to participate in activities that promote a healthy lifestyle. Weight Wars began January 30th and will continue through April. The program includes a competition for the highest percentage of weight loss, with the prizes awarded to the winner. All participants receive a water bottle, food journal, and pedometer. Activities include a We Just Dance competition and a nutrition challenge. Weight Wars is a program that we're putting on for the students and the faculty and staff. Um, and it's for people who want to learn how to live a healthier lifestyle. Peers to Peers is providing nutrition advice, counseling, and the opportunity to work out with a personal trainer. To join the competition, email the address on the screen. Keenan O'Connor is QTV's new gaming expert. This week, he answers the call of duty by breaking down the popular video game, COD Black Ops. Hello everyone, and welcome to Gamers Insight, Q Gamers review segment. In today's segment, we are going to give a quick overview and a current status of Activision and Treyarch's latest release, Call of Duty Black Ops. Since its release in early November, Black Ops has made over $1 billion in revenue, which has made it the most popular game in the market. In fact, in the entire entertainment industry, only Black Ops and James Cameron's Avatar has made this much money this quickly. The majority of Black Ops' income came from $650 million made within the first five days of its release. As well, since its release, over a billion hours have been logged of online play. For those of you who don't know what Call of Duty is, Call of Duty is a first-person shooter. In Black Ops, the campaign story mode follows a series of Black Ops agents, with Alex Mason being the main character. You complete missions and fight off the communist regime of Russia, Vietnam, Cuba, and many more. The online play has made many different maps and even more game modes. The greatest thing about that sets Black Ops apart from other games in this series is that the online mode allows you to almost customize anything and everything about your character. The gun, more, the gun and more. As well, instead of the, the traditional level up and unlock, you level up and unlock categories and play online. Games to gain COD points and those points to unlock everything else within the unlocked categories. Call of Duty is also available at your low, ah, local retailer. That's it for today's segment, but before I go, here's a sneak peek at Irrational Games' newest game in development, Bioshock Infinite.
have another game for you next time. I'm reporting for QUTV. I'm Keenan O'Connor. Although many students may not know what Huntington's disease is, one QU student is doing her part to fight the illness. Sophomore Kelsey Buskin's father suffers from Huntington's and hopes students can help support research for the disease. There is no cure for Huntington's disease and no way of stopping its progression. Research can help slow down the course of the disease and allow the person affected to be comfortable as long as possible. So what we're doing here at Quincy University is um, having a dorm competition and there are seven groups, one for each dorm, and then faculty has their own group, and then in the Woods group is also off in on-campus housing. Whoever sells the most gets free pizza, and then if you buy $5 worth or $10 worth, you get put into a raffle to win um, gift cards and other prizes from the Quincy University Bookstore. So. Students can purchase a heart for Huntington's disease for $1 in Francis Hall, the cafeteria, and North Campus. Last June, Josh Raby was hired as the new head coach for the Quincy University baseball team. Raby had an outstanding college career at Quincy and even played in the major leagues with the Minnesota Twins in 2006. Earlier this week, I sat down with Raby to discuss the upcoming baseball season. I am here with QU alum, former Minnesota Twin, and now head baseball coach for the Hawks, Josh Raby. Tell us a little about your journey from the major leagues back to your alma mater as head coach. It was a long journey, obviously, uh, me being from the area. Um, you know, I got a lot of support coming from this area throughout my, uh, throughout my career. You know, it, it stretched from small towns like Elizabeth in Tennessee and then big towns like Rochester, New York, and uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it was kind of a round trip, um, you know, a round trip all across the United States back here to Quincy. It's good to be back. My family's happy I'm back, and uh, hopefully the Hawks are happy I'm back. How do you think your major league career has prepared you for a career in coaching? Um, first, I think you have to go with knowledge. I uh, played nine years of uh, professional baseball. You know, I've learned a lot of things over the years that not only you, you wouldn't learn it necessarily at the college level, and now coming back, uh, hopefully, hopefully I can share some of that knowledge with our current players. The team was picked to finish third in the, G the division in the GLVC. What are your expectations for the team? Uh, my expectations, um, we had three goals at the beginning of the year. My, I had three goals kind of set for the team. One was to play good fundamental baseball. Uh, two was to win our side of the division. The three was to win a conference tournament. Uh, if we do those three, three things, we'll have a lot of success. You know, our team was picked third on our side. You know, hopefully I'd like to think we're better than that. And hopefully we uh, show people we're a lot better than that. You made it. Made it to major leagues, which is something that most of your players would like to do. What is some advice that you could give them to achieve their dreams? Uh, don't listen to anybody tell them they can't do it. Because if I did that, I would have been uh, probably sitting here a long time ago. So, you know, a lot of them, a lot of them have some success in college, and hopefully they get a chance at the next level. Thank you, Coach. We look forward to a great baseball season with the Hawks. The Kiu Lady Hawks basketball record-setting streak has come to an end after 18 wins in a row with a loss Monday to Wisconsin Parkside. Despite the setback, the Lady Hawks are feeling good heading into the playoffs. The team is on pace for the best record in the program's history. By winning their final game, the Lady Hawks can finish with 24 wins, two losses, and a GLVC title. The team is currently ranked 11th in the nation. Me personally, I feel like it's just a, a ranking. I feel like it's just a number. What really matters, I'm sure, to me and the team is like the championship, winning a championship and actually bringing back something to prove to everyone that goes to the school and that will go to the school that you know we actually did something for instead of just a number that changes every week. The Lady Hawks are best in the conference and are looking to host the first round of the playoffs late February. The Hawks and Lady Hawks celebrated senior night this past Thursday. Graduation season is rapidly approaching and only one more assignment stands between seniors and their diplomas, the graduation application. All students, all seniors, must submit their application to the registrar's office by March 1st. Seniors must be finished with undergraduate and graduate level requirements this spring or summer and pay the one-time graduation fee of $125. Late applications will result in an additional fee of $100. Failure to file an application by March 1st may result in a later graduation date. You must pay the fee whether participating in the May commencement ceremony or not. One note to remember, 
Students who wish to take part in the commencement ceremony must be within six hours of completing their degree. You can download the application from the registrar page of the QU website. And of course, congratulations to all of our seniors. Thank you for watching QU TV News. We'll be back in two weeks with the latest campus news.